the most amazing natural spectacles take place on our blue home planet. It's understandable that in the face of snowstorms, hurricanes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis, we regard the unyielding power of nature with awe. However, if you compare the phenomena that take place on Earth with the incredible events that regularly take place on the moons of Saturn and Jupiter, the breathtaking events on our earthly home sometimes fade into the background. Today, we'd like to share with you the most fascinating features of the constant companions of the iconic ringed planet and the largest member of our planetary system. Get ready for imposing volcanic landscapes, gigantic lakes of liquid methane, and subterranean oceans that dwarf everything known so far. Enthusiastic about breathtaking celestial bodies and the most amazing phenomena in the universe? Then subscribe to Simply Space to learn more about these fascinating topics on a regular basis. If you like our videos, show us with a thumbs up. At the end of the video, feel free to click on the images in the credits to navigate to more interesting posts. Now let's set off together to the unique satellites of Jupiter and Saturn. I.O. We'd like to start with the Galilean moons of Jupiter. As the name of Jupiter's four largest satellites suggest, these unique celestial bodies were discovered and described by the world-famous polymath Galileo Galilei. Several centuries have passed since the Italian scientist added the moons to the star map in 1610. In step with the passing decades, our knowledge of the nature and property of Jupiter's four largest satellites has also increased. Today, we know that the moon Io, with an equatorial diameter of 2,264 miles, is not only the fourth largest satellite of our planetary system, but also the most volcanic celestial body in our galactic neighborhood. In fact, the surface of the innermost of all Galilean moons resembles a true patchwork. What could easily be mistaken for meteorite craters at first glance are in fact countless volcanoes. There are said to be about 300 of these fire-breathing formations on Io's outer shell, most of which are still active. However, the majority of these red-hot objects are not classic fire mountains as we know them from our earthly home. Rather, Io is home to dozens of so-called calderas. These are cauldron-shaped depressions on the surface that were formed in the course of volcanic activity. Many calderas still spew ash and smoke into the air, at heights of up to 180 miles. In some other volcanic depressions, however, amazing sulfur lakes have formed over the course of time. The fact that Io is the celestial body with the most pronounced volcanism in our solar system is due to the influence of Jupiter and the other Galilean moons. The gravitational forces acting on the satellite ensure that Io is heated from the inside, so that the heat energy repeatedly makes its way to the surface of the satellite. The lava flows that pour onto the Moon's outer surface as a result of this interaction reach temperatures of up to 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit. Europa While in the past we thought the Earth was the only celestial body in our solar system, on which water could exist in a permanently liquid form, we were eventually taught better as research progressed. Nowadays, experts agree that under the imposing ice cover of the moon Europa, a saltwater ocean of unimagined dimensions slumbers. Specifically, the subglacial body of water is said to span practically the entire surface of the satellite, reaching up to 60 miles in depth. In addition, the smallest Galilean moon is characterized by the countless trenches and fissures that have eaten into the surface of the satellite over the millennia. These furrows represent structures in the surface structures that were formed as part of the dynamic processes in the moon's soil. On the outer side of the icy moon, however, it is freezing cold. The maximum temperatures here are a frosty negative 238 degrees Fahrenheit. Ganymede no other moon in our solar system is as large as Ganymede. With a diameter of 3,270 miles, Jupiter's constant companion easily secures the title of the largest satellite in our galactic neighborhood. Besides its impressive dimensions, Ganymede also knows how to fascinate with its unique, strongly pronounced magnetic field, which makes it completely unique in the ranks of moons. 
the giant satellite, which is even larger than the planet Mercury, needs a little more than seven days to completely orbit Jupiter. The tectonic activities on Ganymede ultimately ensured that the most diverse landscape formations have developed on the satellite. Thus, we find beside younger areas graced by faults and trenches, also a clearly older region, which is marked by numerous impact craters. Ganymede is also classified as an icy moon, since it has a thick layer of frosty ice crust. Inside the moon, we find an iron core, which is covered by a mantle of silicate rock. Callisto The moon Callisto orbits Jupiter at a distance of about 1.2 million miles. Thanks to its equatorial diameter of 2,996 miles, the satellite ranks second in the list of Galilean moons ordered by size. At the same time, Callisto is the second largest moon within our planetary system. What characterizes this Jupiter satellite at first sight are the countless impact craters on the outer surface of the moon. The rutted surface of the moon is covered by a dense layer of frozen water ice particles, which reaches a thickness of about 120 miles. Just as in the case of Europa, experts suspect that there may be a vast sea of liquid salt water beneath the surface of Callisto. The core of the satellite is imposed not only of rock and iron, but unusually also partly of ice. As we can also easily observe, the ice cover on the lunar surface presents itself in an amazingly dark hue. This is because, over the course of millions of years, thousands and thousands of tons of rock fragments and dust from space rain down on the lunar surface. With respect to the number and density of meteorite craters, Callisto outshines almost all other celestial bodies of our solar system. Only Saturn's moon Phoebe has a comparably furrowed shape. Titan After having looked at the unique characteristics of the Galilean moons, we would now like to move on to the realms of Saturn. The natural companions of the world-famous ring planet hold some fascinating natural phenomena, too. The largest of all of Saturn's moons, Titan, captivates us with its unique composition. In fact, as is with the water on Earth, in the case of Titan, there is a huge array of lakes, rivers, and smaller oceans composed of liquid methane and ethane. These chemical compounds can exist on the icy moon in a permanently liquid aggregate state, because on its surface, frosty cold average temperatures of negative 310 degrees Fahrenheit prevail. The methane waters on Jupiter's satellite differ significantly from one another in terms of their characteristics and composition. In addition to the mighty ocean-like formations, such as the 154,441 square mile methane lake Kraken Mare, we find mainly smaller lakes on other parts of the moon, often located on high plateaus. While the large liquid methane accumulations are fed by complex tributaries, the smaller lakes are supplied by regular methane rainfall. Indeed, the chemical compounds on Titan are subject to a circulating rhythm that can be compared to the water cycle on Earth. When the condensed methane rises into Titan's atmosphere, it forms a thick, virtually impenetrable cloud cover. From there, the thick methane droplets descend on the lunar surface in slow motion. This is due to the fact that gravity on the satellite is significantly lower than on Earth. No less exciting than the methane cycles on Titan is the pronounced cryovolcanism that prevails on this satellite. In contrast to terrestrial volcanoes, these formations don't eject lava and smoke, but most likely a mix of ammonia and water into the environment. In spite of all these differences, Titan, with its mountain ranges, lakes, and rivers, is considered to be the celestial body in our planetary system that's most similar to Earth in its natural surface formations. Enceladus Our blue home planet has an albedo of 0.3. This value indicates how high the reflectivity of a celestial body is. In other words, this means that our Earth reflects about 30% of incoming sunlight back into space. However, this is nothing compared to the breathtaking reflectivity of the moon Enceladus. In fact, Saturn's satellite has the property of reflecting 99% of the sun's incoming rays. This makes the small moon the celestial body with the highest albedo in our planetary system. However, it's also worth taking a closer look at the satellite's brilliant white surface. It's characterized by its varied landscape structure. Here, we find not only craters and flattened areas on Enceladus, but also numerous crevices and several chains of mountains. Just like on Titan, we can observe a pronounced cryovolcanism on Enceladus. 
The volcanoes on the surface, which is covered by dense ice, spew water vapor and ice particles into the surrounding area. In combination with the many geysers that spew fountains of water onto the moon's outer surface, this is also the reason for the icy moon's unparalleled albedo. The substances that regularly reach the surface in the course of these processes form ever new, radiant snow and ice landscapes. Iapetus You might say Iapetus is a moon with two faces, literally. While one side of the moon is unusually dark, the opposite side is remarkably bright. Specifically, the albedo on the bright side amounts to 50%, while the darker areas, only 3 to 5% of the incident sunlight is reflected. Why exactly the moon presents itself this way has yet to be explained completely. One theory cites the slow rotation speed of the celestial body. Since Iepetus rotates extremely slowly, more dust from space would hit on the dark side than on the opposite side. This might cause the surface ice layer to heat up, whereupon it would evaporate and reveal underlying rock layers. Which moon captivated you the most? Write down your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback in the comments. See you next time.